All right, so get ready to dig into a really wild story, because today we're talking about Captain Crunch. And I don't mean the sugary cereal. We're going all the way back to the 70s when folks were rocking out to disco and bell bottoms were all the rage. But more importantly, for our story, it was a time when Bell Telephone basically ran the whole phone system. Like they were the only game in town. Mm -hmm. Long distance calls cost a small fortune. And that's where our guy John Draper steps in, a young guy at the time, with a knack for electronics and a toy whistle that would change everything. Yeah, it's funny how these things happen, right? Like, looking back, it seems almost obvious. Draper was fascinated by electronics from a young age, even built his own little radio station as a kid. Then you factor in his time in the military, working with radios and communication systems, and you can kind of see the path taking shape. Right. It wasn't just the technical skills he picked up. It was the environment, too, right? This whole idea of pushing boundaries, figuring out how things work... Sounds like the perfect breeding ground for someone like Draper. Absolutely. And that brings us to Denny Teresi, a blind radio enthusiast who was deep into this new thing called phone freaking. Wait, hold on, blind. How could someone who can't see mess around with the phone system? It's actually more intuitive than you might think. You see, back then, the phone system wasn't all digital like it is now. It ran on these analog tones, specific frequencies that would trigger different actions. And Terezi, with his hearing, he could pick out and recreate those tones. He and other freaks were using all sorts of things like organs, even recordings to do it. But they needed something more precise. Something more like a hacker tool. Exactly. That's where Draper comes in with his engineering skills. He creates what would become known as the blue box. This device could generate the exact tones you needed to control the phone system. So, so like you could pick up the phone, play a few tones, and suddenly you're talking to someone across the country for free. You, It was like having a secret key to this whole world of communication that was supposed to be locked away. That's incredible. But this is where it gets really interesting. The key to unlocking that world, for Draper at least, was hiding in plain sight. Mm-hmm. In a box of Captain Crunch cereal. No way! Yeah, that iconic whistle, you know the one. It just happened to emit a 2600 hertz tone, the exact frequency AT&T used to signal an open long distance line. So you blow the whistle, trick the system, and bam, free calls. That is wild. It's genius. Really audacious, a little bit absurd, all rolled into one. And it's just the beginning of John Draper's story. There's Draper, right, running around with his blue box and a Cap'n Crunch whistle. Basically a counterculture folk hero at this point. Mm -hmm. But fame... Even in the phone freaking world, mm-hmm. has a way of attracting attention. That's right, and not always the good kind. Exactly. Which brings us to 1971 in this Esquire magazine article. This article blew the whole phone freaking scene wide open, and there's Draper front and center. Oh, wow. So this underground thing is suddenly splashed across a mainstream magazine. Pretty much. And it captures this really interesting moment in time. How so? Well, you have these huge companies like AT&T controlling everything right. They have this tight grip on communication. And suddenly you have these tech-savvy folks figuring out how to bend the rules. It was this clash of old and new. I can see that. A real David and Goliath situation. Exactly. But for Draper, the article was a double-edged sword. Yeah. On the one hand, he's a legend, but it also puts him on the radar of the feds. Makes sense. They couldn't just ignore it. And they didn't. In 1972, he gets arrested for toll fraud. Ah, so it wasn't all fun and games anymore. Not exactly. But this is where the story gets really interesting. Because it's not just about the legal stuff. It's about connections and how shared passions, even rebellious ones, can have these unexpected ripple effects. Okay, I'm intrigued. So that same Esquire article that got Draper into trouble would also caught the eye of a certain tech enthusiast by the name of Steve Wozniak. No way. Get out of here. Yeah, Wozniak was himself. He reads the article, tracks Draper down, and they connect. Over phone freaking? Seriously. (laughs) That's the thing. It wasn't business or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It was this shared fascination with the blue box, with understanding how the phone system worked and how to manipulate it. That's wild. Talk about a fateful meeting. Right. And it gets even better because Wozniak brings Draper into a circle. And who's in that circle? None other than Steve Jobs. Wow. So the origins of Apple are intertwined with the phone freak and his blue box. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. The company that becomes synonymous with innovation, challenging the status quo, it all traces back in part to this culture of hacking and pushing boundaries. And I'm guessing this connection goes beyond just shared interests. You're right. In 1977, Wozniak is at Apple, and he brings Draper in as a contractor. His task design a device that can connect the Apple II computer to phone lines. Hold on now. This is before modems were everywhere, right? 
the idea of computers talking to each other over phone lines was like something out of Star Trek. Exactly. And who better to figure it out than a phone freak? Makes sense. I mean, Draper was the perfect guy for the job. Exactly. He takes his phone freaking knowledge and tries to apply it to this new world of personal computers. So what happened? Did it work? The device was called the Charlie Board, and it was designed to use toll-free numbers and company phone systems. But it never actually went on sale. Really? Why not? I guess Apple saw the potential risks. They knew it could be seen as, well, a bit too close to Draper's past. But it just goes to show you how Draper's unconventional expertise almost play a part in shaping the future of personal computing. It really makes you wonder what could have been. Right. But even without the Charlie board, Draper's story at this point is all about this constant push and pull between brilliance, rebelliousness, and the unpredictable nature of technology. It's funny, right? We talk about innovation, and we picture this straight line up and to the right. But Draper's story, it's anything but. Yeah, it's more of a roller coaster, isn't it? Highs and lows, unexpected twists and turns. Exactly. And I think it's important to remember, phone freaking back then, it wasn't just a harmless prank, it was illegal. Right, there were actual laws being broken. And Draper, he paid the price. Jail time, multiple times. It makes you wonder, did all that, you know, that pushing against the rules, did it spill over into other parts of his life? That's the really tough part of the story. Because later on, there are these allegations against him. Serious ones. Oh, what kind of allegations? People coming forward, many from within the tech world, accusing him of inappropriate behavior, harassment, stalking. Wow. Okay, that's that's heavy stuff. It is. And it's not just rumors. There are articles, documented accounts. It paints a pretty disturbing picture. So then how do you square that? I mean, the guy clearly made huge contributions to technology, but if these accusations are true? Exactly. And it's a question we grapple with all the time, right? Yeah. Not just with Draper. How do we separate the person, the work, from the harm they may have caused? Right. It's something we see in so many fields. And it's not easy. Draper, he attributed some of his behavior to having Asperger's syndrome. Hmm. Which explains some things, maybe, but doesn't excuse them. Exactly. It adds another layer of complexity, though, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Makes you think about how we understand neurodiversity, the challenges of navigating social situations. Definitely. It's a reminder that people are complicated. That's it, exactly. Yeah. So we're left with this legacy, a legacy that is both inspiring and, honestly, unsettling. The highs and the lows. Exactly. John Draper, Captain Crunch, mm -hmm. he embodies this kind of duality, this incredible ingenuity, this drive to push boundaries, but also this potential for harm, for unintended consequences. And ultimately, we have to learn from both sides, right? Absolutely. As we celebrate the pioneers, the innovators, we also have to acknowledge the full impact of their actions. And that's how we make sure that the future of technology is a brighter one for everyone.